How do you prefer teach or learn math? By using only memory procedures one by one, by a combination of memory procedures, conceptual understanding, reasoning, or just by reasoning and logic. What do you think is better? Or is the integration of all of those approaches the one that makes the learning of mathematics effective? What do you think uh, about a possible contamination of our teaching practices that is affecting a students' learning? This is the purpose of today's video, and I want to know your ideas. I want to know your opinion. Let's see it. I have two examples. When you are teaching or learning order of operations, question like this one, negative 6 plus 1 times 10 minus 8 in a parenthesis, many textbooks in mathematics curriculum, they use the word PANDAS. And this is effective. I have used it for years, and many teachers, they, they have used it for years, and it works. And this is about memory. This is the difference between memory and reasoning in learning and in teaching mathematics. But I think that the, we pursue the uh, learning, the lifetime learning. And the order of operation is critical in arithmetic and will be critical later on in the rest of the mathematics fields. PENDAS, the students remember the word. And when they remember the word, they immediately say KP stands for parentheses, E for exponents, M for multiplication, D for division, A for addition, and S for subtraction. And they immediately have a guide to get the answer. So let's say that if they want to do this question, they know that they need to do the parentheses first, and 10 minus 8 is as uh, two, and then they know that they move to exponent. If they don't see it, they move to multiplication. One times two is two. And they finally end with, um, they move to division, and they don't see division. They move to addition and subtraction, and they can subtract here negative six plus two, and the answer is negative four, and this is the answer. So right here, memory, memorizing the word, and memorizing uh, the letters and for what operation each letter stands for, it helps, it's effective. What do you think? For example, now, can, how can you teach the unit circle? How can you teach all of those angles? How can you make the students memorize such a significant amount of numbers and, and points and angles in degrees and in radians. I know there are some teachers that they have a method um, to teach this by using logic and memory. And sometimes it's more memory than logic. I do not like to use memory here. So what I like is to use reasoning. So the introduction to the unit circle, to work with the important angles in the first quadrant, to know how to find um, reference angles, how to know when the sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent uh, are positive or negative. I prefer to develop a, 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 a reasoning of from where the things are coming from, from where uh, we get that negative one half, that point over here, negative one half, let me highlight it, and a square root of three over two for that particular angle. And why I have here is zero one, what I have here one zero, what I have here negative one and zero. And the angles in degrees, the angles in radians. So what happened? How can I get that from that 210? I get the angle in radian. How to convert from radian, but doing procedural mathematics, but also reasoning. I prefer to use reasoning in cases like this. Uh, reference angles is critical. How can we find a reference angle? That will be the key 
to work with this uh, particular unit circle. Take a look. Let's start building math. This is the most beautiful teaching approach in mathematics and in science and in general, any subject that you're learning. Make the students build the knowledge. Make the students construct the ideas, reach the conclusions. This is the beautiful, the most beautiful aspect of learning. So, briefly, if you want to teach that big circle with that significant amount of numbers, angles, degrees, radians, positive, negative points, start making the students construct the idea. Start with something that they know. They know the coordinate system. They know that. They know that this is a coordinate system. This is the playground in which we play mathematics. Let's start with naming the quadrants. They know that. They, they really know the quadrants. They really know that this is zero. They know that this angle here is 90 degrees. And this angle here is the straight angle, 180. And this angle here is no more than 90 plus 90 plus 90, 270. And the final destination is 360. Let's the two in construct and analyze that 0 and 360 are kind of the same angle. And 90 and 180 and play with arithmetic. Put all these numbers in a line and say 0, 9, 18, 27, 36 and they will see multiples of 90. They make the students connect the different fields of the mathematics, the arithmetic, the beautiful number sense. Let's start making the students building, building an angle. Any angle, let's say, I don't know, 45 degrees. Talk about the points in that angle, any point in that angle. Tell me the coordinate of that point, or the, co the, 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 the coordinate of that point, or that line. I don't know. May the students be creators, not just learners, creators. They can create knowledge. Of course, it's a knowledge that we already know, but it's beautiful. It's so engaged. The students get so engaged when they discover by themselves what makes sense for them. So at that point, what, what, what point is this? What is it? What is positive or negative? Oh, it's positive and it's positive. The X is positive, the Y is positive. And what about here? Let's, let's put another angle here, another line. Tell me the coordinate of this point. Okay, the X is positive. No, the X is negative and the Y is positive. And you can do the same. You can do the same. You can do the same. And they said here both are negative, the X and the Y. And right here, the point, okay, positive or negative. No, no, the X is positive, the Y is negative. And this construction is the way that Euclid constructs the, the plane geometry. I don't believe that Euclid constructs the, the geometry, the plane geometry that we know today, like this. No, he starts with a very simple element, the point. And the point generates another point, another point will generate a line, and three points generate a plane. This is 
the way to teach. This is the real math pedagogy. Of course, we need the memory, but we need more reasoning. We need construction of knowledge. We need construction of knowledge. And now, the students later on, when they discover that the x is the cosine of the angle and the y is the sine of the angle, they can understand the signs of all those trigonometrical functions in every quadrant. In any revolution, one revolution, two revolution, three revolution, because they are generating numbers, since they are generating numbers that are connected, they are multiples of nine, let's say that way. And they said that the sign right here will be positive, and the cosine will be positive. And right here, the cosine will be negative, and the sine will be positive. And the cosine here and the sine will be negative both. And the cosine right here is positive, and the sine is negative. And then the combination of sine over cosine for tangent and cosine over sine. What do you think? Construction of knowledge. And then you make the students construct the circle. They, you, you can tell them, unicircle. And, and this point right here will be a unicircle is the one with the radius equal one. So they, they, they can understand that this is one, this is one, this is one. I have explained this in multiple videos. And now they understand that this is one zero and this is zero one and this is a negative one and zero. And this point right here is zero negative one. And now they, they can connect that the sine over here is negative one and the cosine is zero and they can under, start understanding the functions. And then the reference angle. That we have the angle here in the first quadrant, zeta. And how can I find a reference angle to that angle in the second quadrant? 180, 180 minus zeta. And in the third quadrant is zeta minus 180. And in this quadrant here is 360 minus zeta. Yeah, this is, this is the way to teach unit circle. What about another words that is used in curriculum? So, ka, uh, to. For the sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. And the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is the opposite over adjacent. It works. Memory works. But reasoning is not working here. Are we teaching correctly, effectively? We can use it, of course. We can use it to pass a test. But we cannot use it for lifetime learning. I'm sorry. I use it. We have to provide that to the students. This is another way eh, to memorize. But it's, I prefer that you construct your knowledge with the right triangle. And you can find what is the angles and what is adjacent to the angle alpha or opposite to the angle beta. And what is the hypotenuse and what, what adjacent means. And adjacent is interchangeable because it's adjacent to the angle alpha, but it's opposite to the angle beta. The students need to see all those relations before going over the words. This is to, to pass the test, but no, to learn lifetime. And we have, as a teacher, the responsibility to teach lifetime and to provide different approaches and different view of the mathematics. I hope you like the video and I, ho I hope you share the video. Thank you for watching and I would like to see your comments. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.